In the consumption section, the question that we were trying to answer is how do individuals make consumption or savings decision? In investment, we are similarly uh, going to answer, try and answer, it's a very simple question that how do firms make investment decisions? Now, of course, investments can be a machine or an equipment. It can be building an entire factory or a building, so on and so forth. So suppose a firm is trying to decide to make a factory. It has one factory let's say it's operating at full capacity and now the firm is trying to decide whether it should invest in construction of a second factory how should they make this decision uh, so before answering this question let's go back once again to eco 207 and revise what we already know from 207 in eco 207 uh, not why sorry investment was a function of interest rate and YT. Now for individual farms, uh, for one farm, uh, what mattered was the interest rate and savings, uh, sorry, and sales. Now, of course, we know that sales, when you sell something, ultimately that's your income and we know income ultimately comes from output or we don't even need this like when you're selling something you must have produced it so sales is directly related to output and that is what we have uh, uh, just hold on i have to pause the video for a minute we we'll have to take care of something so effectively for a firm uh whether or not they should invest depended on how much their sales volume was if they could sell more which would ultimately mean they were producing more they would invest more or vice versa so this was a positive relationship and of course if interest was high people would invest less and vice versa so this was a negative relationship this is all that we knew in eco uh, 207 was the previous course now, of course, we are going to add expectation into it. Uh, so let's do that. So suppose, as I said, a firm is deciding whether to build a factory or not. So, of course, building a factory takes some time. So suppose firm is trying to decide whether in period T they should begin construction of a factory. So IT, investment in period T, should it go up or not? So we need to do some calculations and we need to figure out whether cost of building this factory, if it was a machine, we would say the price of buying the machine, for example, so for factory, the cost of building this machine, uh, building this factory, and we are going to look at the, uh, the present value. We've talked about present value in chapter 14. Present value of expected rise in income or sales, let's say. So of course, if we are building a new factory, we are going to do it because we expect that this factory will allow us to produce more. As a result, we will be able to sell more. So these are the two things we are going to take a look at. The present expected rise in income, of course, this we expect this rise to be permanent. Every year, we will see a rise, a higher level of income. And so we will have to calculate the present value of all of that year two income year three income year four income and so on we are going to look at the cost the initial cost of building this factory and then if the present value of expected rise in income is higher than the cost of building this factory then we should build this factory 
If the opposite is true, if cost is higher than the rise in income, then obviously we should not. Okay, so let's get a bit mathematical here. Okay, so construction begins in period T. Okay, so in period T, we make the investment. And suppose that the factory will be ready for use in period T plus one. So ready for use in period T plus one. Okay. So what will be the first profit from construction of this factory? Uh, let's do that. So present value of expected profit let me rewrite this first profit will come in uh year t.1 so what we have is expected profit in period t plus one divided by one plus rt because we are waiting one extra year, right? We've started construction in period T and it will be ready for using T.1, T plus one, which is when we will start to see the expected rise in profit. So this is the first profit that we are going to see in the second year. Then what will be the second profit that we see? Uh, what we will see is 1 plus RT for the second year we will have to do our T plus 1 and this is expected don't forget there is depreciation capital stock is going to go down and then we have uh, T plus 2 and then next year what will be the profit 1 plus RT we know this 1 plus RT plus 1, this is expected. And also for the next year, RT plus 2, this is also expected. 1 minus delta for two years now, so squared times expected profit in period T plus 3, right? And so on. We are going to keep calculating this because once we've built a factory, we expect our income or profit to be higher in every single year. And we are going to add up all this, right? This is actually instead of calling it first, uh, this is, uh, let's call this second year profit. Then we have third year profit. Then we have fourth year profit and so on and so forth. And what we are going to do is we are going to add all of them up all the year's profits increase in profit so present value of all the expected profit in period t and if this is higher than the investment that we are making the investment of course is the cost of construction So if this is the case, then we should make the investment because the rise in profit is higher than our expenditure. If the opposite is true, the present value of all the expected profits is less than the IT, then uh, let's use blue, then we do not make the investment because the cost to build the factory is higher than the, uh, the extra income that we will be earning. Okay, so uh, a few things to clarify here. Uh, 
PV, present value of expected profit in period T. This is, I'm going to write this down because a lot of people tend to make a mistake here. This is the present value of expected rise in profit per unit of capital okay so these are all important present value of expected rise in profit per unit of capital we'll just keep that in mind and so as a result the relationship that we are getting here is that investment uh let's go up for a minute this is the investment relationship that we had in 207 we have uh, modified this a little bit and the relationship that we have right now is it is equal to v it and this is a positive relationship. What that means, uh, let me write down the implications. There are two implications of this. Uh, one means that if expected profit goes up, see, we have a positive relationship. So if expected profit is going up, then V is going to go up. V or PV, same thing, present value, value. This is going to go up. And as a result, investment is going to go up. Okay, that's the relationship. And the reverse is also true. If this goes down, this goes down, this goes down. The second relationship has to do with interest rate. If expected interest rate uh, were to go up, what will happen? We've done this in chapter 14. When interest goes up, present value goes down. As a result, investment goes down. And of course, the reverse is also true. If this goes down, this goes up. Uh, sorry. Uh, this. Oh, yeah, actually, this goes up. Okay, so these are two important relationships to keep in mind. Effectively, what it means is that when our expected profit is going up, uh, then of course we are more willing to invest. And when interest rate, expected interest rate is going up, we are less willing to invest. Very simple when, uh, when you think about it, but it's important to keep the mechanism in mind, which is what we have done around.